Hello and welcome to Michael and Ivanka's Grand Podcast, a weekly chat between two technologically oriented nerds from England and so on. My name's Michael Forrest. And I'm Ivanka Magic. This week, we're going to talk about that most British of institutions, the BBC, um, that British Broadcasting Corporation. I, I think they've uh, pretty seriously dropped the ball on a lot of things over the years, and I'm not too impressed with them, even though we used to talk about them as though they were the best uh, medium in the world. And I'm going to take the argument for the opposition. Hooray! <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> a debate. I am going to do my best to defend their honour uh, because there is much that they do which is very excellent. Okay. Is my uh, contention. <laughs> all right, let's try it. How's it going, Ivanka? How's it going? This week has been mostly about the Bravo, Brighton Restaurant Awards Vote Online, which launched on Monday to great traffic to a website, <laughs> which is how I measure success. And so that's been excellent, but it involves a lot of work, a lot of tinkering. Um, some people, most people being nice, few people being rude. People send what email. Saying? Well, you know how I, well, because we run this, this site and it's, the, there's an email that people have to log in in order to vote. Right. Uh, just so that we don't have clickety clicks going crazy. And occasionally people forgot their password from last year, but they're still entered into the site and then they can't reset password. And they send you these emails going, I am disgusted, not impressed. <laughs> <laughs> and you go, oh, I'm terribly sorry that you've been so frustrated. <laughs> so I'm expert. Thankfully, it's only like two or three a day, but they send you these emails like you've... So it just reminds me that whenever I send an email to a support person, I try very hard to be really nice, even if I'm really annoyed, because <laughs> it's not really their fault. I got one this week on habits on how like there was this bug, which I sort of noticed in the corner of my eye. But I was like, but it was like a dark mode, light mode, weird thing. But uh, so it's a bit like edge case. But I got an email and then I fixed the bug that morning and pushed a build out. So by the time the guy, the person had got up again in America, it was already fixed. Oh, he was like, you are awesome. You are awesome. Like, yeah, I am. <laughs> well, I got called an angel this morning by somebody who'd started off going, bleh, 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 not impressed. And I was like, oh, don't be sorry. I've reset your password and tried it. And it all seems to be fine now. Have a lovely day. <laughs> so you're an evil corporation now. I am now. Held um, to that standard. So, yes, so evil, so I've been an evil corporation, but in, in much more interesting news, Nick and I have made our first concrete bird bath what? to add to our collection of bird baths. When you say made, you poured oh, yeah. it into some made, sort of literally. rubber mould? Yeah, into a mould that we fashioned. We watched some YouTube videos, Michael. You'd have been mm. very impressed. We watched a variety of them. And some people are obviously more competent than others. And we decided on a particular approach where for the inside mould, this person used sand. Mm. So shape it, or just shape a lump of sand, then mm. put a bigger vessel over the top, a plastic vessel, and then pour concrete into the gap. Right. That makes any sense. I shall link to the video. <laughs> <laughs> but, but actually, uh, because a lot of the American Canadian, that sort of, I have to say, Western, they sort of buy, let's go to Home Depot and buy a cheap bucket and then tear the bucket off the concrete. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, that's waste. That's not the point. And so, whereas if you go more developing countries or whatever, <laughs> they're a bit more uh, into preserving the things to make. <laughs> Yeah. Them, use them next time. So uh, so we learned from that. I think the trick is to take the mould off before the concrete is a hot, completely set. Mm. So it's set, it's solid, but not super dry. Anyway, this is my top tip. Maybe we were successful. It's very good. The birds are just discovering it now. Yeah. They're a bit sceptical because it's new in the garden. Mm. <laughs> so there's a couple of them just having a little drink. No baths yet, but yeah. What size bag of concrete stuff did you have to haul? Well, we bought cement. So we bought, cement. bought bags of cement and bags of sand. Yeah. And so... How big? I, I don't know. A bag of cement's 
20 kilos. But 20 not, kilos. But we've not used a whole bag of cement for sure. Well, it's very interesting that you should be talking about this because my story this week was about working with concrete and sort of uh, oh a big goodness. bag of stuff. We have had a cracked tile in the bathroom for a year now and we've just been scared to try and fix it. Partly because it's like Sharon's flat, really, and I don't want to, like, make anything worse, but also, like, it's got to get done. And, like, the plumber, like, the person wanted way too much money and I asked my brother, who's a contractor, and he's like, I can't let you pay 300 quid to replace a tile. So I've sort of, like, bought the stuff to do it, but it's just been sitting there for a while. <laughs> but last weekend we bit the bullet... And um, pulled up this tile, discovered that why it cracked was because they'd really skimped on the uh, stuff underneath, so it was, like, obviously going to crack, um, which was a bit uh, bit shocking. But um, we had to sort of chip out all this stuff, which took ages. And then um, we, we went to B&Q and got, like, two plastic buckets, and we were sort of mixing up the stuff. And then the, 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 event, the fun part was when we bought, like, two and a half kilos, but we definitely needed at least five or ten oh. but they only had 20 kilo bags of the stuff we wanted or two and a half um <sighs> like the 10 bags were the wrong stuff but it just meant that as the first lot dot few dollops of stuff were drying in the floor I had to jump on my bike and like ride up to the nearest open like place, get like a twenty kilo bag of of the stuff, the floor glued stuff, put that in my bag. I'm very happy about my big bag that I got in Brighton, um, which it it was good. So I'm sort of coming down Kilburn High Street, massively overloaded, a bit worried about my thing breaking. My brakes kind of need changing on my bike as well, but like. Oof, um, made it all the way back in time, mixed up this batch. We got it down, we put the tile in, and um, it's it's the um, it's the most solid tile in our bathroom now, and we're very proud of it. <laughs> <laughs> How big is this tile that it took it 20 was, kilos of glue? Not 20, no, it took probably, but it probably took like six. Like, it was, really? it was a really big tile, like a... Like nearly a metre long, I think. Like, oh, like, okay. Kind of a big one. But the worst thing was that I'd taken my watch, my Apple watch off whilst working and didn't put it on for that epic bike ride. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get any, uh, didn't get any points. Got no points. Oh, it's like it never happened. The other thing I'm going to, I've got on my list is I just wanted to say... Um, have that we've started trying to watch like Bollywood films. Oh yeah, because it's just uh, like these things are epic. Like that, none of them are less than like two and a half hours long. And like we watched, we watched this one called Zero last week, which is basically a really VFX, like but flawless, really good visual effects. But it was basically a romantic comedy. So just like um, it's, it's strange to see a romantic comedy with such huge production values. But then. Um, uh, on Sunday, we watched this film called Padman, which I would really highly recommend. And it's about a man in India who figures out how to make um, what's the word pad? Oh, the uh, uh, female sanitary pads. Sanitary towels. He figured. Uh, he basically figured out how to make these female sanitary towels because, I think like, just sanitary towels will do. So Sorry. <laughs> you said female. I, I know I did. Say. I was trying to think female about... I did, it reminds product. me of that sex ed education episode where the headmaster's trying to practice what he's going to call them in assembly. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot that. Um, I was not, it kind of ran into that. I hadn't written down what to say. It's, it's, um, it's so... It's like... I mean, the relationship with his wife seems to mainly revolve around him startling her. Like, <laughs> but apart from that like an absolutely brilliant like he tries something and fails and tries something else and fails and tries and fails and tries and fails just keeps like banging away at this thing and it's like I've never really seen a, a film where someone is so kind of overcomes quite so much adversity and sort of perseveres <laughs> quite so hard um just well worth a look well worth a watch um I'm just kind of looking at these films and going I've, just, I've got to get out of this kind of like western European like oriented yeah, yeah. mindset Funk. and just see yeah, yeah. there's all this <laughs> most of the world is completely different to my experience and and this and now these films these Bollywood films they're just like epic and brilliant so yeah would recommend Padman it's on Netflix oh. so there you go 
On the subject of startling people, yes. I used to work with somebody who she used to take great pleasure in jumping out of using recording this on video, jumping out and startling either her wife or her child and then okay. recording it. It's hilarious. <laughs> she come into work in the morning and go, watch this one, watch this one. So basically her wife and child must be walking around the house the whole time like <laughs> on edge. <laughs> Let's talk about the B bloody BC, the bloody B Broadcasting Corporation of the United Kingdom, shall we? The BBC. The BBC. You like them. What's so good about the BBC? We can start from there. Um, I'm going to, as I'm taking the um, the defence, well, I like CBBS a lot. OK, not something CBBS that I'm... CBBS <laughs> makes, they make excellent, truly excellent educational TV. Uh, which it With doesn't no have adverts, adverts Brilliant. <laughs> which is amazing. Is Peppa Pig not on BB no. CBBS? Okay, no. good. Peppa Pig is not on CBBS. They have truly like, um, hey, Dougie, he's got, you know, like he, he it's, he's like a, a dog scout thing and he gets his badges, like a voting badge and a recycling badge. And then there's mm. Charlie and Lola. They also, they're always doing something educational. Well, it's, it just make it gives you actually a way of talking to your child about some topics that you you didn't know. Then they've got like Andy's dinosaur adventures, animal adventures, how things are made. My, God, it's just now actually. Now Ivanka, these are. Let me yeah. stop you there. These dinosaurs <laughs> are yeah. they uh, still from the Jurassic Park era, or have they been updated to have feathers? Uh, I think they've. I don't, I don't know. Colourful? I, I don't really watch it. <laughs> Do they have plumage? No, no, but he goes back in time. Because when we talk about educational, we've we've got to be educating these children about the feathered dinosaurs. They had feathers. Feathered dinosaurs. Okay, mm. I don't know. I'll check. So I don't know uh, if the BBC other parents has taken it. Probably no. Corporate responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, CBBS. I feel comfortable letting my child sit in front of the TV for half an hour and mm. just watch whatever comes on. And well, I, that's very good. I'm not particularly worried that she's going to see something that is in some way age inappropriate or it's going to be trying to sell us something or so yeah I, I do admire it for that and they have very they talk about real topics like I mean I don't know if you used to watch News Round when you were little because oh, yes. I was a BBC child as well yeah, yeah, and, you yeah, know, yeah. News Round tackles serious topics not that my child's old enough for news round yet but you got to know the news but discussed at a level that you could understand it which i thought was good mm. um well, so Blue yeah peter as well like um that was quite formative for me like i i think a lot of what i learned what i got into as a child was seeing an amiga on blue peter and then entering some comp they used to do a lot of competitions a though. lot of competitions like, yeah. so i you know i'd write in I'm draw my picture and send it in and then sort of be sort of expecting to maybe win and then waiting for ages and then finally they like <laughs> announced the results and you're like Oh, right. OK, I guess not then. And you, but like this whole time as a child, you're like, oh, I'm going to I'm going to get when I get my Amiga from winning this competition, this drawing competition. And, you yeah, know, weeks go by. Um, but also, uh, yeah, like um, I used to live for those toy advert TV shows, to be honest. <laughs> it's good. I mean, yeah, I used to be I desperate think... to see them. <laughs> the, the, so a lot of Croatian telly or, or telly that we watch when we were kids here, they do animations really well. Mm. So and they used to buy, I think the Croatian telly they buy more telly and the former Yugoslav. So we used to get Czech cartoons or animations that with no, you know, so that it was just music and animation, so that they translated really easily. Um, so you know, the the foreigners amongst us might recognise <laughs> Ayeto, which is a couple of guys who. Of making things they always get into all sorts of bother and okay. they're they're like the young, chuckle brothers there was, i suppose they are like the chuckle brothers but they're <laughs> puppets and right okay. there's no words Sorry, animation so they just and then and there's professor baltazar okay so that's children's stuff so that's children's sure. stuff i think is a big deal 
Like, I always get this feeling like they're spreading themselves too thin. Like I hear that, oh, now they've got have a website and there's got to be BBC Three and BBC Four. And like, um, do you think they managed to maintain... Like, it, it's, it's interesting that they're able to do so much. that Because obviously, like, I'm completely unaware of any children's TV myself. <laughs> so that this is not something I thought about at all. There's also documentaries... OK, yes. Other things on the BBC are documentaries. They get the fancy cameras out, they go into the sea and then they get Attenborough to talk over it. Yeah. Which is in they, they do pioneer some techniques, don't they? I believe so. They pioneer. They, they, I think there are, um, as one of, one of my friends and our regular listeners <laughs> was spent many years working for the, was a producer at the BBC for Science TV. Mm. Uh, and I have... I put a lot of value on what on the, on a good BBC documentary. I have to say, they tend to be well put together, well researched, good content. So yeah, I, I you know I've I've got no objections to the BBC documentary. I mean, old uh, Attenborough going off and doing his blue planets and stuff. He's had a massive impact on the people's approach to the plastic pollution problem. I know plastic pollution isn't the the biggest challenge, but it's mm. focused people's minds seeing, you know, the sad little seahorse clutching a plastic straw in the sea. It's made everybody mm. go, oh, maybe. So I think it has value in that regard. I think my, and um, like, we'll, we'll defer news until a bit yeah, later let's on defer because news. that's what, that's what, that's where I think it's just failed recently. Um, but, um, I sort of was thinking about like the BBC has always been responsible for a lot of very interesting stuff. And I and you hit like Monty Python was obviously a very innovative and crazy comedy show that really set like just created a completely new thing. The reason I want to talk about that is in terms of like fiction and other kinds of things. I do think the BBC continues to do comedy very well for some reason. But yes, um, I I've got comedy on my list. Yeah. yeah. But, <laughs> but like the, the dramas and, and the stuff like that, I, I think are generally I, I can't watch them because and now I th and now I'm thinking about it I'm thinking probably the reason is I think there's too many cooks and they're trying to like kind of make it too accessible or something or too like and it, it always just seems a bit heavy-handed and a bit like that kind of going over the same tropes a lot in these things and um I think they don't really I'm not sure that they're giving when you compare that to Netflix where the basically directors get you know, TV, the producers get just total freedom to do, like, to do their vision uh, with no one interfering. I think the BBC is interfering a lot or they've just got a mindset where they sort of want to, don't want to upset anyone because it's the, the TV licence. And it does result, in my opinion, in a lot of very bland or kind of like, I, I don't know, like not, not very interesting television to me. But what I think that they used to just kind of give you free reign, like so Monty Python were just on the basis of not very much given free reign to make this completely absurd show. Um, but something I've been thinking about in terms of that is, I mean, that was very much a, a white privilege thing to be able to walk into the BBC and have them give you a blank slate, a, you know, a blank check to kind of do whatever you want. Um, now that they can't just go, oh, yeah, well, you went to Oxford and uh, you seem uh, very white and very well spoken. Yeah, we can give you, we can trust you with some money now that, you know, that's not going to stand anymore. So there's a lot more sort of scrutiny and a lot more kind of in, um, necessary diversity and inclusiveness. But I think at the cost of really letting anyone have free reign to make something, make their own vision. That's, that's something I would suggest is how I feel about I, it. I don't, I I haven't really thought about it in that way. I guess uh, not trying. So, but you know, like I enjoyed Killing Eve. I enjoyed you the didn't. first series of Killing Eve. The and second then, series um, was completely lost the plot. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it, I'm, well, apparently there's another series coming out, and I'm not sure what they're gonna like. Well, I don't oh, know. Sorry, well, that's a not... spoiler. <laughs> I wasn't okay, going to probably watch the rest of the second series, but we got um, a few episodes in. It was like, what happened to the conflict and motivation of these characters? <laughs> They're just doing random stuff now. Like, come on. Yeah, Where's it's a bit uh, of a... Phoebe? But... Maybe Phoebe needs to come back. <laughs> like... I have enjoyed Killing Eve. I have enjoyed, um, what's that one with the Brummies? The violent one. <laughs> the, Another one I can be uh, bothered to watch. Peaky Blinders. Yeah, Peaky Blinders. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, that's popular. That's not going to like... Popular, but it's not good. It's not... Like... <laughs> I don't know. 
It's good telly. <laughs> if, if it depends mm. if you want to think. I mean, not all telly needs to make you think all the time, unless no, you're four. In, it's not and about your thinking. It's about like telly. seeing something you haven't seen before that's not just sort of a bit crude. Because we're in this, you know, since The Sopranos and since even like Twin Peaks, like TV has be- evolved into something a lot more interesting. I feel like the BBC has never really like managed to do that. Like Killing Eve had moments definitely in the first series i was like oh this this might actually be as good as some of the stuff that's coming out of america but like there's no comparison like the subtlety and the the kind of like the the it doesn't patronize you so many of these tv and now that like with twin peaks the return like it's just some of these shows are just like absolutely nuts now they've sort of been given a license to do stuff that's absolutely insane um but it's a completely different commercial model and it's a completely different situation for like hbo just kind of goes here's some money make your thing thing. netflix goes here's some money make your thing and i think a lot of stuff is coming out of those but it's much harder to justify when it's sort of basically taxpayer money but i think you've got i think going back to comedy or even things like graham norton on a friday or something like that you know like the the sort of chat showy format i think I think he still gets a reasonably free reign with his behaviour and the way he structures questions. It's not something I watch very often, but when I do, it just seems to be its own little happy thing. And I think it makes... um uh, it makes for good watching on a if you're sort of like relaxing on a late evening or something. You don't know what to watch, but it's also um, the, the absence of adverts <laughs> makes yeah, most I things mean, better. It I really mean, I does. Don't watch, really, ever watch any adverts? <laughs> so, no, like, I don't. Um, but I, but I think going back to what we were saying about the comedy thing, whereas. Some of some telly seems to, like you say, you know, have to please lots of people and won't take a position. Com- the, some of the comedy on the BBC clearly has free reign to be as controversial as it pleases. Yeah, the comedy. Um, you know, I think BBC is, continues to. Yeah, but they, these are very sort of flash in the pan, like six episodes. You know, they're sort of maybe twelve. Yeah. Like they, they can. It can Just, be like an author, like an an individual writer that can sort of churn out enough of this stuff. But like as yeah, soon as they, yeah. try, it's not like the American comedy series that go on for years and years. Years, no. But, I mean, I'm just so, saying it's cliches now, but like everyone knows this. But like, well, yeah, like you definitely I, get some. I, yeah. What, what was? I, but what have we had recently? On I guess I, since Fleabag. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I, don't, I can't noticed. think of it. But, oh, but right, staff let's. Oh, that, is that on? Is that on? The, staff left. Let flats. Oh, yeah, we I were think, watching that. That the, the one in the the garage DJs. Um, yeah, there's been some. There's been some decent stuff. I think there's some decent stuff. I think it's even always, like it gets a bit depressing, doesn't it? Since the office, everything's a bit embarrassment, depressing comedy. Yeah, I, I'm not a <laughs> massive fan of embarrassment, depressing comedy. It's not my. <laughs> It's not my thing, but I think. But I also enjoy. See, I also enjoy things like the 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 news quiz, the radio. Um, I always listen to it as a podcast, but I that makes me laugh, um, mm-hmm. and I'm always a bit sad when when its stint ends and it goes to whatever the backup is. <laughs> and they've been also putting in a lot of effort, like um, of having obviously deliberately diverse panels. Mm. And I think that's cool. And I think it's. I'm glad that they're doing it. It's the same with the with the children's TV. They the the diversity of children and family shapes and people and different abilities and different you know, that you see on the telly makes everybody normal and equal. And I think yeah. that's nice. Yes. I think it's very nice and very necessary. So you know, you watch any one of these TV shows with a with with my daughter and there's like you know there might there's just as easily going to be a child in a wheelchair as an able-bodied child or whatever it's all and they're all the same and I think that's cool and I want her to watch telly like that of course um, but so, yeah so CBBS we're happy with yeah I think the comedy f- has that has a bit of that level of freedom uh, freedom yeah. and and uh, striving to do to contribute in some way that's more than just go ha ha little laugh let's have a laugh cheap so, laughs has EastEnders become self-aware and it's like I, if, if I sort of saw some it's just I mean it's always been like that but who would I, I don't want to talk about EastEnders it's just I, don't, <laughs> I, I haven't watched it for so horrendous. long horrendous um, and like the Archers is oh, come on 
<laughs> size. But like I, we watch. So here's. So, but I want to talk. We watch Bake Off to go to sleep. Yeah. The Great British Bake Off. Like I, I hadn't really watched it very much before, but we've been watching it. What What kind of strikes me about it is it's. It, it's I mean it's like Mel and Sue are absolutely perfect like as TV yes. presenters like everything they say is like this completely distilled wonderful little thing um, but you, you sort of go I, I kind of I could I could do with this being three times as long and like they edit it it's so edited like it's so fast paced it's so cut 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 because I've watched a lot of stuff on YouTube now which is like long form cookery long form stuff that um I, you know I, sometimes I think like I I could stand it because TV on like broadcast television has always had this like had these firm boundaries half hour half hour which now like like Netflix shows there's not you know some one episode might be half an hour one might be 42 61 minutes like they're, they're sort of a little bit out of that mold but because BBC is so used to being in this like you you must fit this time cut everything yeah. I sort of like I you know I think it could stand to be <laughs> I'd watch you know, bake off XL, I think, and enjoy it just <laughs> well, as much. Uh, well, apparently slow TV is a thing that mm. I... Because of these... Because of my friend who listens often, <laughs> who is a TV producer, her husband is a cameraman, mm. and he was off shooting some slow telly where mm. you literally, you know, shoot some plants growing for whatever, you know, I don't know, but it's, <laughs> it's kind of a... a um, it's a format that people enjoy. But I think yeah. going back to your, to the... TV like Bake Off, mm. it's it's kind. It's not yes. going for controversy. Yes. Apparently, when people were really freaking out, I read somewhere, or oh, you know, things were going wrong for them. Mel and Sue, Mel or Sue, would deliberately come near them and swear so that the footage couldn't be used. Right. So, you know, like it's safe telly. And I will, I'll say for that that Trump day when I was very reluctant to do radio or, t or anything. Mm. But the journalists, the BBC journalists that I spoke to, I felt like they weren't going to ridicule... They weren't going to make it hard for me. They were kind mm. to me. And so, therefore, yeah. they eased me into it. And I think there is a kindness, certainly to the people that, you know, to the people that work at the BBC that we encounter in our in our things like Bake Off and our, and our good comedy and our CBeebies yeah. that is... That comes out in the telling. I will. I will say something. <laughs> I will something. I, like I, I. I. I do agree. I will say something to that point that my friend uh, Graham, when he was on BBC Click, he did say like, um, like when before they were filming and like as they were sort of doing it, they were like everyone was like best mates and like best friends. But then like as soon as they sort of got the footage, the sort of presenters like, were sort of off on in their in their clique and just over there and didn't really talk to them anymore. <laughs> and it was like, yeah, I mean, part of this is just being a producer and like you're not going to so, just get yeah, good yeah, they TV need to by get being what they that. need to get. Yeah. It is it is a it is a it is a production strategy, yeah, yeah. but you know it does make you feel good. And as long as you don't have to like realize that it's. <laughs> <laughs> you're being produced. The, the, yeah, yeah. Um, but but that doesn't. I mean, like the fact that you just cut off and gone. Like cause I've been, you know, you, that's. Like, mm. I, I recognise that as well. But it doesn't matter yeah. really because you've got the thing done. So, but it's not all uh, kindness and quality telly, is it, well, Michael? Yes. Should we? Uh, <laughs> should we? Let's talk. A, I, like I, you know, I, I meant to listen to a bit of Radio Four just to remind myself of how like angry it makes me. Like two minutes of Radio Four in the morning, the Today Show program, like just makes me the Today Show. That's something else. Today program <laughs> makes me. Um, so frustrated in the sort of like these rails that they're on with how they do things and talk about things and like and we will talk about they they feel the need to in quotes balance everything with yeah. some bullshit to counteract every reasoned argument oh we've got to throw some bullshit in and often that's like the last word is the bullshit um and like never really taking a stand like yes it's supposed to be unbiased but like it's not it's so unbiased now that it's 
has it's got this like trumpian disregard for what reality or truth at this point in my opinion like it's just sort of like here's some stuff here's some stuff here's some stuff here's some stuff we're impartial we're impartial um cut cut and obviously it's again it's got that we've just got to cut 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 so everything's very sort of shallowly kind of dipped into and you always dip into the same sort of sats types of cliche and sound bites and like the, it's just like the most obvious stupid thing someone could say that gets said yeah. and then the most obvious but, thing that you would and you, know, you can't get into an argument and it, that's the time constraint but i just um i think like it's it's chronically unbiased if that makes sense it's chronically but, unopinionated but i i so i mean we we've discussed um in the past i don't know if i've i've uh, told this little story on podcast before but when when we moved to england just after the war started uh, in Yugoslavia we got my my father immediately got sort of a satellite dish and had French news Russian news German mm. news every news in every language that he could possibly get hold yeah. of and and he used to joke he said like if, by the, if we get I'm sure there's a country that if we get to their news there'll be no war because it'd be like the, the the headlines that were chosen were so vastly different depending on mm. the country. There were like twenty people killed, ten people killed, nobody killed, everybody killed. You know, it was like, mm. and it so this sort of idea that any sort of news or any anything that's selected like that for broadcast doesn't have an element of bias mm. behind it is, you know, that there just is because even if somebody's trying very hard not to be biased. They, they will introduce a bias. I'm not saying that as a defence. I'm saying it more as a, should we really be surprised mm. that there is a bias? Well, yeah, and then, like, I, impartiality was the word I was looking for. And it's like, yeah, you can't be impartial about someone just lying. Like, that's no. not impartiality. That's just giving someone a platform. And the BBC is a huge platform. And, yeah. like, and just question time type thing where they repeatedly... Like, they are responsible for... They had Farage on again and again yeah. and again. And they hardly ever have Caroline Lucas on, who's an actual MP. Mm. You know, there's a whole... Con yeah, I mean, there's always been this sort of difficulty of getting, you know, Caroline Lucas or someone from the Green Party even involved in a lot of the TV debates because they're considered... Because they've only got one MP. Mm -hmm. They're somehow treated like a, a, um, a minor party. But um, but yes, yeah, so there, there's all of that having that. And, but I think they're competing these days. We know this, but like exactly, more yeah, for that. for clicks and views and likes and shares. And so they have they've uh, got sucked into this ratings game, which is not what the BBC is supposed to be doing. And they right. have like everything's about like, yes, there's no adverts. But there's about 50 adverts for other BBC shows between each show. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then Especially like, on podcasts. Yeah, it's like, um, it's. I, I feel like they're not, you know, they're not fulfilling their brief. They're playing that, that game, clicks, views. Um, oh, well, who can we have on that's going to get... I, I feel like they're, they're playing that instead of being actually impartial they're um doing this yeah the 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 the, the fake balance which is not yeah. balance it's like here's some bullshit and we're going to give it the same way yeah. because no matter what you think like the bbc being on the bbc is the big time right like that is yeah that yeah, is yeah absolutely absolutely the big time if you've been on the bbc you're famous like yeah. in no uncertain terms. The, I mean, there's this thing that we, we that Nick was talking about on on the 31st of January <laughs> this year. Mm. We woke up in the morning and he always checks BBC News website and I, I, it's not one of mine. He goes, he goes, looking at the BBC News website, you wouldn't think that we were leaving the European Union today. Mm. Like there was nothing, and he he was measuring against the people he grew up with and around, and he was like. You know, if the BBC isn't talking about it, it's basically not happening. That is yeah. the respected source. Yeah. So if the BBC doesn't talk about climate change, if the BBC doesn't talk about a, a, a prime minister who's a liar, yeah. if, the, if the BBC doesn't talk about the fact that Brexit is not all <laughs> roses, mm -hmm. then their people won't be won't have their attention drawn to it. Yeah. They've sort of forget forgotten that sort of information element of their um their brief i think or they've lost it when yeah. it comes to news Oh
I'm also thinking like they've got this, you know, there's the Paxman interview, Paxman, <laughs> Padman, Paxman interview style of the, like the, the hard hitting interview where he won't let someone get away with not answering. And that has been repurposed by certainly by like the Today programme. Like it's just used indiscriminately that they, they used that sort of tone for stuff that it does it makes no sense to be using that tone and it's just rude and it's just you're not listening to the other person and you've asked something a bit like awkward and you shouldn't really be surprised if they can't just answer le- yes or no and it means that when it is needed it, it doesn't really work anymore and plus like you, you're not no. No, they're not going to stop they're not going to say no we're going to wait for the news until Boris answers this question. We're, we're going to wait for the news until yeah. Dom, like, you know, they're not going to do that. They're just going to sort of pretend they're doing it in this superficial way. But it, all it does is just dilutes the power of that. And meanwhile, you've got like, and, and now, like, I look at like Mehdi Hassan for that sort of interview where he, I mean, mm. which does involve him interrupting and talking over people a lot, but he will not take any bullshit from anyone he will kind of keep kind of asking for the answer of the actual good question he's asked that the person is definitely avoiding like the bbc uses that format but i feel like you know again indiscriminately i I think that i mean this now that we've started talking about it there are so many different things that i could say or that like so many arguments that come to mind one thing that I think is important that's come up this week is the fact that Downing Street has uh, declared that they, they want to selectively brief journalists. So in the same way that, you know, Trump, it's the same thing, but done slightly differently, where Trump would just go, would ban a journalist from mm. the White House, or at least try to, they've owned, they're have they only inviting certain news agencies for certain briefings mm. so that you know, unfriendlies don't get a chance to to publish. And as I understand it, uh, that journalists are collectively opposing this. Yeah. But I still, you know, it's a dangerous, dangerous precedent Hmm. to allow, you know, that's what journalism's job is to investigate things on our behalf and let us know. Yeah. That's it. We to are mark, and it's a, apply the same principles to documentaries and to the news. Yeah. And the BBC is supposed to be, you know, our democracy doesn't work without the no. BBC, basically. The BBC is our, is supposed to be the way that our democracy doesn't fall to populism and all those kinds of things, but what they've done is they've 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 stopped doing their job and they've allowed this to happen. They just put stuff up there and yeah. And what they choose to put up there is is not always done. Um, they think it's impartial, but it's not. It's no. giving someone a platform. Yeah, and I, and I think this balance... And don't... We've had this conversation as well. Yes. This being impartial thing. Impartial is... You do... I think you do need... If you, if you truly want to sort of have or feel informed in the world you do need to read the right wing and the left wing press you do you do need to read both biases at the moment um just to see what the other other people are thinking and how it's going and you know not just to reflect back the world you think of you know the 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 the, not just to reflect back to yourself what you think already but but I do. But in some news things, some of these elements are so factual. And I, I am enjoying the news here <laughs> for a bit mm. because it does have this um, as much as I'm sure everybody here slags it off. You know, every, and we're right to always mm. criticise the people that tell us stuff. Mm. You know, <laughs> like I think I think we should be constantly holding not mm. just our politicians, our journalists, our doctors. You know, yes, I want to hand over my trust to my doctor, but I can still go. Really? <laughs> How does that work then? You know, that's cool and that's allowed. But, I, you know, but here we are on a daily basis on the news being reminded that the climate's in trouble. Yeah, yeah and I like, love that. I love when we were talking about that, like the idea so, that they would actually kind of keep a slot for it. Like, yeah. there really should be a slot for this every day. <laughs> but, um, like, the, it's like impartiality. You can't be impartial to the truth. Like no. You can be impartial to different opinions. You can be impartial to different political views or like, you know, I don't know, lifestyles, visions. But you can't be impartial to something, the, to the truth. And I think the way that this used to operate was 
you know, it was quite patriarchal, the sort of BBC tone. It was sort of like, well, yeah, I mean, yeah. well that's very silly and, you know, we, we won't listen to that. That's a lot of nonsense. Um, there was this sort of like, I know better than you kind of implied, um, which now that we don't have that, what do we have instead? We have people being a bit too scared to actually address things in terms of truth. Um, and it's not political correctness gone mad. It's just we need to no. find a way to get back to conversations where the evidence and verifiability and, like, you can't just say whatever you want, like, anymore, yeah. like you can now. And, and I think a lot of this is, like, I am not a consumer of news. Mm. I am a... Uh, not in that same way that I choose between that washing powder and that washing yeah. powder. I am... I am a, a citizen who needs yeah. to be informed and you are a tool, you are a service. It's the, yeah. it's a public service. Yeah, don't treat is. us as consumers. We've seen, I'm, I'm getting through Kate Raworth. <laughs> I don't like economics. It's so slow going. Partly because I think every time I get like a few pages, I'd like have some ideas and want to like think about it. Um, but like, yeah, she was definitely like, it's really damaging to read. If you frame people as consumers, they behave one way. If you frame it as citizens, they behave in a completely different way. Yeah. Um, and it's a lot more selfish when you treat people as consumers. Like if you if that's yeah. and if that's the BBC what the BBC is doing, then that's absolutely wrong. That it's not what they should be doing at all. I don't think so. No, I think they should, you know, treat us. They should d deliver the service that we need them. We need them to tell us what's happening in them. the world. Yeah, that's it. Exactly. We need them, and we need them to hold our politicians to account, and, and we we need them. And I actually find like the BBC World Service was I was that's what I will listen to more if I am going to listen to something BBC because at least it's yeah. not kind of got this kind of UK politics. But then you know where am I going to get my UK politics from? I don't know. for listening if you like the podcast go to grandpodcast.com you can email us hello at grandpodcast.com soon too and um yeah there's a subscribe button please subscribe uh where can people find you ivanka people can find me at ivanka on twitter and i do i do like a message so yes, do message good. me an at. i got i, I got an app this week i, I, noticed, well. I, didn't, I noticed i keep missing ads on my twitter i need to just give I, it something uh, um, my ats got a bit drowned during uh, uh, Davos Trump. week and right. various things, but um, I, I managed to it, it DMs work though. I haven't don't have mine open anyway. Yeah. I do like a message. You can find me on Twitter. I like some feedback. It makes so me do it. That's at Ivanka. At um, Ivanka. <laughs> at Ivanka Space Trump. That's your Twitter handle, right? That's right. <laughs> Correct. Um, my, uh, I, you can find me at michaelforestmusic.com or you can find me on twitch.tv slash michaelforest streaming live what I'm doing. And Ivanka has supported me with her Amazon Prime subscription this week and I am triumphantly only... $80 a month short of Amazon actually paying me so far. That is such a swindle. <laughs> Isn't it? Like, Amazon, like, I, I've got, like, my subscriptions are up to, like, $20 a month but I can't get paid until I've got 100 so thanks. That's nice, isn't it? You just get the interest off thousands of people's uh, small uh, yeah. audiences and just keep that. But, Jeff, you just have that. Just go to space Jeff on it. Jeff needs it. Yeah. yeah, you need it. You probably need it because there's no way of doing, like, like paying someone, like, £10 on the internet, is there? That's just <laughs> not possible. Certainly, Amazon certainly doesn't have the infrastructure to set something like that up. No way. Oh, wait, isn't Amazon all about buying stuff for 90p on the internet and getting it in an hour? I thought that's what Amazon's thing was. Thanks, Jeff. Um, you can support... Something I wanted to do was, like, you can support us on Patreon at grandpodcast.com. No. Patreon.com slash Grand Podcast. And I'm just going to tell you, here's some people that I support on Patreon. John Conway is a painter. I give him a dollar per drawing. Nikki Case makes um, interactive explainers. I give him $2 a month. Red Letter Media is a good YouTube channel that I've watched for years that does really good film reviews. Complete Guide to Everything is a podcast that I give a dollar a month. Alex Norris I, it does these nice little web comics. He gets a dollar. 
Game Maker's Toolkit, I think does some really good YouTube videos. He gets three bucks because he gives me a little bit of a reward extra video. Contra Points gets a dollar. I might up it so that I can get in the credits. Look, Mum, no computer. Pindex makes those YouTube videos oh. with little Stephen Fry voiceovers. And Graham uh, Dunning, who we kind of did a little exchange to try and kind of give our channels a bit of social proof by giving each other $10 a month. So listen, it's support indica independent creators. Be like me and support us. <laughs> <laughs> I will still be very much under what I'm giving to other people, even if you did support the podcast. Um, did you hate that, Ivanka? <laughs> no, no, I thought that no. was good. I like it. <laughs> Okay, cool. Uh, is there anything else we need to worry about? Uh, reviews, algorithm, yeah. robots, whatever. <laughs> yeah, that stuff. That stuff. Um, yeah. But yes, thank you very much for listening to our podcast. And we'll uh, see you next week. Bye. See you next week. Bye. Bye, 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 bye.